I just learned some jazz today is true. What's up, y'all? It's Vince from uh, Passion of the Prophet. This is episode 70. Liz, who do we have on? We have on Marjorie, our good friend from Sweatnet. Mm-hmm. And uh, Sweatnet GR. Yep. As a fitness, lifestyle, brand, and service. All the things. All fitness. the things. Everything cool, fun, what's going on in the fitness world in West Michigan. Yeah, so we, we plan to talk about that, and we, we touched on that, but we also had it interesting conversation marjorie is from the education space she was a teacher at my high school and so we end up having this interesting uh, conversation on education i talked about my experiences she talked about hers and liz brought hers and so i think this is such an interesting conversation let us know what you guys think do you guys agree with me agree with liz or agree with marjorie yeah three different perspectives all from different worlds so let us know what you think and uh we look forward to hearing your feedback Hey, this is Kirk, producer of the Passion to Profit podcast. I did not want to have to do this, people. But every week, Liz and Vince come on here and ask you to subscribe. They ask you to write Apple reviews. And people, some of you are doing it. A lot of you aren't. For Pete's sake, can you get on there and do it? That way we don't have to hear him talk about it all the time. Thank you. Enjoy the show. You You guys, guess what? The time has finally come. More specifically, dinner time with Ivy Lemon. I just bought a class right now. Are you excited? You guys, our first class is Lebanese food. Don't worry, we'll get to Caribbean next. We're going to break it down, and this is just the first of many classes to come. In fact, we want your feedback on what future classes you'd like to take. But March 24th, dinner time with Ivy Lemon. We're going to make an incredibly delicious, easy Lebanese dinner that you're going to be happy to eat. Vince, are you hype? I'm hyped. Yeah, let's see if I can keep up with Liz in the kitchen. I'm excited for it. I think, uh, yeah. Vince is a fan of Lebanese food, too. This is your genre. This is, you like this food. Yeah, I mean, if you love pita, like I love pita. If you love chicken twerk, like I like chicken twerk, then this is a class for you. Make it a family thing. $40 per household. I'm excited. I'll be teaching. Liz will be teaching. This is going to be legendary for dinner time. So guys, we have limited seats available for our first class. And we, of course, want to make sure our podcast family is in there quick. So head to irylemon.com, click on events, and you'll see it right there. Of course, you can find it on our Instagram at iry.lemon. DM us, slide into Vince's DM, especially if you're cute. And we'll tell you how to get your ticket. Choo, choo, choo. No, I'm just playing. I have more teachers pour negatively into me than positively. Oh my God. But I don't like, but is like, that okay? So what? here's my question is, it's do you think like, that happens? Like, does that happen in, in East Grand Rapids and I just don't realize it? Because I can't comprehend that. I happening. guarantee you, and this is going to be a crazy statement. So is that a hiring thing? Of I the guarantee teachers? all the black kids that go to EGR have dealt with that 100%. I mean, I think that there is. So it's a race thing. I think, you know. No, they're just, they're just, it's not, it doesn't have to be just race. That's what I'm saying. Right. Like, I'm saying because they're obviously the odd ones out. There and is so a like, bias, and I, I do yeah. think that it's something in that's in an infrastructure of education. And whether you're a teacher, you're an administrator, um, you work for whatever school board, whatever it might be, there there is some you know biases that need to be addressed, and there's a lot of things that you have to unpack to get to whatever it might be that's for sadly holding kids back yeah and i don't i don't think it's intentional always i think that Probably subconscious like yeah i mean you just well yeah like remember i never sat in the room and when the teacher said that and i was like oh this teacher's a horrible teacher like really right. no I, it like, was normalized to you in a way for someone to do that we're human beings like i don't know her home life like 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 there's Vince, a at that age you could think that oh 100 well impressed. also a kid's <laughs> reputation can go so far you don't even realize it but like yeah. teachers will be like Okay, tell me about this kid, this kid, this kid, this kid before. Oh, 100. Like, I already know my kids have reputations in the entire school. So, I mean, yeah. that's to me. I was also sad. I used to not, and I'm not saying I was perfect by any means, but I didn't want to know mm-hmm. because then I would have those biases. Of course. And it would make it that much go. harder. I'd be the same way. I'd be like, do not tell Aaron's me. a problem kid. Well, why, why is Aaron <laughs> a problem kid? <laughs> yeah. He just woke up just bad. He was born bad from the beginning. Like, yeah, there might be people who are just evil from, since they're born, or there could be circumstances or situations that get you there. Mm-hmm. Well then, when and what, I, and what do we label as bad? Disruptive. Yeah. Like, are they? What is disruptive? Like, 
did they ask too many questions? Yeah. And now you're like, oh, you're being disruptive to the class. Are they not paying attention or are they taken away from your teaching? Right. There's, there's like, there's a billion things that's going on in like in the big classrooms, in the small classrooms, none of that really flies. No. Like, and, but in the small classrooms, it's hard because you realize where you stand really quickly. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I started teaching when I was 21. I was young. I didn't know what I was doing for the first five years. I'm sure I had a horrible reputation. I was like, what am I doing? It was really, oh, yeah, really, tough. really young when I, I started can't teaching. That. But I cared so much. I cared so much. And I feel like my background gave me a little more credibility. And just I taught inner city Chicago and I went to inner city Detroit. And I just cared about being in an, an environment where, you know, not everyone looked the same mm-hmm. and that. There, I just wanted to meet kids where they were at. So that was always something that I kind of felt like helped me. But it's it's hard. I mean, it takes years to be a, a teacher that's, I would say, more respected. And some maybe that are incredibly talented get that right off the bat. But it takes a while. Oh, yeah. It, it takes a while to get to that point. And, um, yeah. So I have a lot of respect for teach. I cannot. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I homeschooled for like three months. And I was like, this is awful but i mean i have so much respect for them for so many reasons like including to i always think about vince who isn't into the traditional learning like my oldest son for some reason is obsessed with the traditional tests and reading and all that and i just can't comprehend and even in my oldest is like a little bit above average and so even my teacher then has to how do you keep him challenged but she can't necessarily right you know this whole thing and it's like I have a lot of empathy for them because I could not do it. And you're dealing with not just, so you have, you have many different customers, like we're all business owners. So you've got your kids are your customers. The teachers are your customers. You know, the, 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 all the other teachers, there's so much involved, so many people to, to satisfy. And I just cannot comprehend it. Yeah. If you're good at school, like that kid should just be keep on excelling. Cause like, that's fair. Like, so like, uh, I was saying this on my own podcast, like, you know, equal an opportunity, not equal an outcome. That's fair. Mm. But you have to at least give the kids yeah. the opportunity and you have to do your best on, on, and that's the whole system. Like from, like, it's not just the teacher to meet there, right? Like those kids I was talking about earlier, like they had book, this was like 2015, 20, they had books from five years ago. Yeah. So they weren't even prepped for the new math. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, how, what is that kid supposed to do? Their that's parents have inequity. No, that's, I mean, that's where you They have no the money. Yeah. They're not getting any financial aid for real. Because who's going to take them down to the office? Like, who's going to cook? Like, oh, yeah. no. so, like, how do you, so you worked your ass off for, from 14 to about 17, 18. Because you have all this pressure. If you don't do this right, yeah. you fail in life. Mm-hmm. I it's always tell like, my students, you have to be your own advocate. You have to. Because there's so many kids that won't have people do that for them. They won't have someone advocate, help them out with X, Y, or Z, college prep admissions, um, you know, getting from one hoop to another and yeah. there's a lot of those and kids that's where unfortunately there's, they yeah. fall in the cracks there's kids that i know that you know how to look because they came from a certain neighborhood but we're 4.0 students and you would never know unless you like talk to them yeah but like you walk you, you see the teacher as soon as they walk into class off rip you know the slang from the beginning like they're they're already uh <laughs> treating that kid differently yeah. Just because he has earrings and he probably sacked his pants. But like, I'm like, that's crazy because like, this kid's like the smartest kid that like, is probably in this class right now. He doesn't have to try it. Yeah. And I will say this. I mean, I taught at EK for almost 13 years and I had some of the most talented, brightest, motivated, hardworking, awe-inspiring students. And they were not your traditional kid. You know, yeah. they weren't like, I the mean, cliche. the cliche. And so... What bothers me the most, and this is a whole nother spiel, we don't have to get into it, but it's just the stereotypes on districts. And, you know, they see. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. They think, see. Tell me about it. Diversity. They see color. They see whatever it might be. And they immediately think, mm-hmm. all right, we, this is not, you know, we actually had a lot of parents who were intentional about sending their kids to EK because they yeah. want them to be in a diverse en- environment. And based upon all the surveys, we, did every year with the students the number one thing they appreciated was the diversity yeah. so it was something i think was a huge you know benefit but um i w- i mean i had friends that asked me oh don't they have metal detectors at ek yeah and i'm yeah, like, like okay what no that thing 
yeah. you tell people EK, they act like it was a ghetto school. Like, yeah. or like a, I'm like, do you understand how our field? Yeah. Like, there's there's opportunity and money at EK, but just because it's black kids that go there, and not just black kids, yeah. Mexican kids, and not just Mexican, Asian kids, and not just then European and like all the different types of European kids that go there that are not from right. here. Oh, yeah. That's when I would be like, I invite you to come and sit in my classroom and really experience you know, a cultural environment. Especially where... for West Michigan, which is oh, not yeah. common. Yes, it's so That's uncommon. why it's so funny because I went to the most diverse college in the nation, Boston University, mm -hmm. because I grew up in East and I, I you know, I was Jewish, I was uh, Middle Eastern, so I was a very a minority in my school and I just wanted to be around diverse. But to your point, not just black and white. I wanted people. So it's, it, it's bigger than the that. cafeteria at BU. You'd have a table next to you. They're speaking 10 different languages. And that was to me like, yep. so I, to your point, right. I, I craved that diversity and but luckily, it's infuriating that, but there are so many people who have that small mindset and who it, perpetuate the problem by communicating in this degrading mm -hmm. stereotypical way that is, you know, on the opposite, it should like, a school like East Kentwood, in my opinion, should be celebrated. Like right. it is honestly a very unique situation where you have so many students thriving in this kind of environment from so many different backgrounds and whatever else. And to I mean, I used to party a lot and whatever. I would be at the bar and I would meet people, they'd be and I tell them what I do and they'd be like Oh, are you scared? Like, oh, you know, stuff like that all the time. All the time. Uh, you scared? <laughs> That's so funny because I yeah. will say being in East, like, I never had that thought in my head about East Kentwood. I wonder really? where that comes from. Never. Mm -hmm. Never once. Again, to be totally honest, I thought of it as a country school, like out in the country. Remember, it was less developed when well, I was here in well, the yeah. 80s and 90s. Well, there was, like, well, it was that back then. So yeah. I was like, oh, so. you're out in the country. <laughs> but now that's not the case well, anymore. Well, you're right down, your, your restaurant's yeah. right yeah. down the street. So, I mean. But you I mean, know that's all newly developed. That was not there before. Yeah, but like, saying that it's a country school, also a stereotype. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, uh, more so locate. I don't think I had a negative. It was more of like it's out in the country. No, I know. That's why I, I, I never know been out mean. there. Yeah, the geography. Yeah. But like where EK's place is on the edges of Kentwood. There's Dutton. There's Caledonia. Ca there's Gaines Township. Yeah. yeah. And then you have school of choice. But I mean, even alumni have, would be like, "Oh, it's changed a lot." Yeah. Oh, really like a. Negative. It used to be like. Less negative. diverse. Well, that's that's it, what it is. Call Ken, it for what Kenwood it is. was it like, is yeah, like mm. Kenwood was great. It was all white kids that went there. You know, they yeah. like it was a Caledonia, Dot N, Rich that's Kentwood. True. Before like they started letting everybody else in. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, everybody. so let's but, say but, the opposite. Like EK was predominantly black, and then flipped to be predominantly white. What would people's tone be? Oh, it's coming up. Yeah, it's really coming up. That's what they're yeah, that's what I happens. That. I don't personally believe no, that. look at Wealthy Street. Look at uh, the West Side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's now good because we have a whatever here. It wasn't good before. It was a sketchy area. We didn't go over there. But is that, that's but now not even we, addressing Grand Rapids public or anything else, which is in of itself a whole nother discussion because I think those – it's the eye of – like our – perception of education is so skewed and we are yeah. so hyper-focused on schools that are excelling and where we want our kids to go, where – I don't know. It's just how do you resolve? It's such that? a big. Uh, I feel like parents got to do a way better job of recognizing I do think it comes the who their kids are. But like now, if you're in a situation where you know, mom and dad is doing something else, what's that kid supposed to do? And like, I really do believe in culture. And like, you know, most people do what their parents did. Like, what is the standard? What do you mean? Like, I work hard because my parents work hard. I always tell people, like, you cannot compare me to everybody else. Mm. I come from a foreign family. I'm like people's grandparents. I come from a different yeah. mindset. I look at America as opportunity. My parents came in the late 30s. Like, it's different for me. Yeah. Now, if you've if your mom, dad, great, all from here, and they've only done this, you're probably going to do the same thing. Did you have that mindset <laughs> in school? Well, yeah, I knew in school that – I knew very early on that, like, school wasn't going to be my ticket out. Mm -hmm. One, because I wasn't good at it. Um Two, because I knew the teachers didn't care if I was good at it or not. So you, that sucks right there. Yeah. So that like, breaks my heart. I mean, but that's just the reality. I know. Was, as a mom of reality. boys that It like, wasn't just hurt. me. It was like eight of us. We're like, teachers kind of looked at us. Like, well, we don't know how to like handle you because I asked a question directly. Mm -hmm. Right? I wasn't yeah. being a problem kid. I just didn't understand it. Can you go back? What does you understand? I don't understand any of it. And you were direct. Be more specific. So I'm like, did, yeah. I'm telling you, I don't get what you just said for the last five minutes. Can you go? Well, did you we can't. Did you ever tutoring or? Yeah, my mom tried to give me tutoring and like, you know, I did the tutoring and that helped for a little bit. 
playing with the tutors too is just kind of like did your sister help you like call asher oh yeah my sister helped me a lot because she's super smart. now like if you're like school's a certain way of thinking and i should say she's you're smart too but she was more book smart wouldn't you say like she was good at school yeah she was yeah she was yeah because i don't say that to mean and so that not. also was weird because like she was better at school than me good at school and we're twins right twins so, so then the teacher like well we got to divide you guys up like we got to figure out why you don't I'm like maybe the school was i keep telling them maybe you guys are shorter for me or like <laughs> like you want our meeting yeah, like forty minutes for Liz, me. Can we in make a our class. meetings shorter? Forty minutes for me, like it's not gonna is I'm bored. It's not gonna get through. I think it's because you're so smart. That's a second. But it's like you give me fifteen minutes or like this is what it is, I'm in it. But most teachers like need to fill that hour up. Oh yeah. So they're gonna take their time, they're gonna they're gonna jump to topics. Well, and I can't also, focus with that. You're dealing with so many types of personalities, so many types of learners, and if you're not in a classroom that's super cooperative or on the same page in terms of their skill set or whatever it might be then you're gonna run into issues where you're not gonna meet every kid where they're at and you're not gonna be able to you can't blame the teachers at all for that god that must suck it's hard but you know i agree there has to be there has to be to some extent ways that education in general which i i feel needs like reference just in general could use a lot of yeah, structuring <laughs> i mean my friend caitlin i've just talked to her a lot about what it looks like in the classroom now with covid and she's like well i have zero behavioral issues because i you know give my spiel for 15 minutes and then they do their work and like they are either home or in the classroom but because they don't have the traditional environment she's forced to just be like all right, you know, we're not going to do this discussion or whatever it might be. And she said, actually, a lot of her kids are finding that to be more helpful or they're being more productive. But then there's other kids that are not. So. Oh, yeah. It depends on the kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe they you uh, probably would have liked it. Yeah. Oh, 100 percent. Like, yeah. Yeah. I can get done with this in two, two hours of my yeah. day. Mm -hmm. I'll be 4.0 student because mm -hmm. then right after I'll do the work. But like, so, yeah, like it's such a big thing to like. You know, and we're not anybody that's gonna like. I'm actually fix an expert in education. Okay. You know, fix it tomorrow. About any but it's like it is. You know, whenever they look at it, right? Because there's the teacher aspect, there's where you grow up aspect, and then there's the narrative aspect. It's like all that has Parents to be aspect. That all has that has to be reshaped and redefined. I feel. I feel like, um, like the track because there's so many kids that would just subscribe. Well, I had a one point some GPA. I'm gonna be a loser in life. Like they mm -hmm. just subscribe to that. Because I think that's changing, though. Maybe. Like, is it? I mean, college is definitely changing the impression that you have to go to college. But Thanks still, to entrepreneurs like us. But <laughs> still, though, but there's a lot of companies, and they're, they're, it's changing over. But then again, like, what are going to be the the measures then? No, and it's if right, it's not no. college, and what are, what are the measures? Is the experience? Well, now the colleges are flipping out because they don't have standardized tests to go off of, and they they have more applicants than ever because kids feel like they have a better chance of getting in. Oh, I never thought about that. And yeah, they were, it's, what do you mean they don't have record. standardized testing? They didn't test this year because of COVID, oh my God. which it was always been my dream. Like get rid of these fucking tests. Sorry. Yeah. I love no, that. No, please. I, mean, I, need, I, need, I always wanted to swear on the study. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like you don't have, I don't know. It's so funny to me. You don't get this GPA. You don't get this grade on the test and you can't go here. And this school has this brand. So you go to Yale or Harvard, that means you are already on track to be a top percenter performer in life versus if you're going to uh, Grandpa's Community College. Like, how is that fair? How is that equal an opportunity? Yeah. It's not. But now, rare there's kids like me or kids like who have hustle who like, fuck that, I'm going to do my, I'm going to do my own. Like, who's like that in reality? Well, Very I thought few. you were a dime a dozen. <laughs> like, <laughs> like... Who isn't like, no, no one's like that. But yeah. there's also too much pressure, I think. I, you know, I had kids sobbing if they didn't get into U of M. So, I mean, right. there is so much pressure, but. I definitely cried when I didn't get in. Yeah. Because in my school, everybody. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's a thing, we, but I mean. And the reality is, like, half those kids didn't even earn getting in there. <laughs> and you find out that, like, the kid, the lady from Full House is paying it for a kid. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, like, trust me and shit. like, I've seen it happen where, like. No, yeah, it's crazy. Well, what my bummer was is where like, it's I was not really school, about all the kids that skipped still would get A's. Mm -hmm. I'm talking like 
they just would miraculously. They never studied. I just had to work so hard. They had that hard. finesse. Yeah. They did. I had to work so hard to like it. A lot of kids figured out school. I think Asher figured it out. Oh, yeah. But he works hard at it and studies and like constantly reads and learns. Maybe that's. Maybe I want to be the kid that like. I don't want to be the kid that does this. But, I love like, they nerds. Were, like, nerds are the best. I'll take them. Take them off. I know. I'm very good. <laughs> it's dope. Like, they can just get it. And I think those kids should be in a special class. Like, I'd yo, always be like, wave yeah. your nerd flag. It's all yeah. good. Like, go win. Go be great. <laughs> I know. You know? And then, like, we have the... It's not, like, better or worse. It's just, like, you know, these kids, they just spend time. They enjoy it. Yeah. They're passionate about it, and they're good at it. Like, how do you compete with those kids? You don't. You don't. Those kids need I'm to hoping he cures cancer or something yeah. good. Like, something yeah. just, like, like real sciencey. <laughs> but then you have kids that are also incredibly intelligent that are so apathetic. And, yeah. you know, they they have a whatever, 2.5 GPA because they just don't want to hand anything in. It's They're too good for whatever assignment. They oh, they just don't. I hate that, that energy. <laughs> so, and then what happens to this incredibly bright kid that just what refuses to apply themselves or refuses to comply or, like, kind of go with the system or whatever it might be because they feel they're above it. That's how good their SAT scores are. No, their uh, SAT scores is. are perfect, but then their GPA sucks, or they struggle with X, Y, and Z. But you know what? I'm all about the B student. That was me. Give me a the B student. B plus girl right here. <laughs> I was, I was definitely occasionally a, minus. Yeah, I was definitely a C and D student, maybe an E student sometimes. No, although I remember it in- sucked. Well, you know, I, I, I had, I was, I had some balls at the same time too, so I wasn't really worried about a lot of things. Like if I go back, like. I could have worried about more, you know, but I didn't. Yeah. You probably could have finessed your way to some Bs if you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I mean, there's some grades that I definitely, I, I fin- I'm not going to say the teacher's name, but like I basically finessed just getting a pass. And that uh, that person failed me because they knew what I did. And they're like, they're like, Vince, you can't, uh, he said, like, you can't do this. Like, you can't just finesse Watch and then him. pass. <laughs> and I was like, so you're telling me you're going to fail me because I outsmarted the system? He was like, yeah. I'm like, no, nah, that's not fair. And he was like, well, what you're doing is not fair. So he made me retake the class. Really? Yeah. He finessed you back. Yeah. So me and him had beef after that. I always so, felt like life was just easier to like do it, do the right thing. Like, and I was just wanted the easy way out. I don't want to fight through life. I don't want to be, I came from ancestors, three, four generations of that really fought. I don't want to fight. I got handed this easy situation. I'm just going to do, but it didn't mean I didn't work. I had to, no, you study to work. Hard. Work doesn't work is not. Yeah. Work oh is, yeah. I had to, I wasn't fired. one of the, I don't know who these kids are that don't go to school. Shout out Katie, CFO of Harvard. We would be in the same economics class at BU. She's never there. Better grades than me. Now she's the CFO of Harvard yeah. and I'm making mm-hmm. smoothies for a living. My brother, but he went to, so my brother and I, he's two years younger. We had a huge argument. I went to private school. I went to Hope College, you know, and I, I think I inspired him to some extent. He did pretty well in school. I was definitely an overachiever. He went to community college and I was like appalled. Uh-huh. I'm like, how could you go to community college? You have to he go somewhere. You have money. to do something like get out of the house, whatever. And he's like, no, I'm just going to save my money. And so yeah. he went two years to community, did Walsh um, Business College, which is on the east side. And he's a CFO now. See? He's killing it. And I always tell my students his story because I'm like, you know what? Like, I think to some extent – these prestigious colleges or whatever it might be are overrated. It's not the end of the world 100%. if you're not in that bucket. If it's, you're good, you're good. End of story. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So before we – we can't really leave here without talking about where you are today because you don't teach anymore. Oh, my God. No. So how did we get from high school English teacher at East Kentwood, shout out, which if you guys haven't figured out yet, she taught where Vince went to school mm-hmm. at the same time? Yeah, I, I graduated 14. Mm-hmm. So we have one of Vince's former school teachers on the show. Well, yeah, I don't think I ever had your class, though. Right. Mm-hmm. But long story short, update us where you've been over the last three th- three to four years. Yeah, so, um, yeah, big shout out to EK. Go Ooh, Falcons. Go Falcons. Don't hate on EK. Y'all I, need to go I check it out. I was hating on it. Oh, people so, hate on it. I didn't realize that. <laughs> well, I only know you, and it's only been positive. To me, it's like the most amazing. I can't wait to go. Oh, I fight for EK. I tell kids, I tell parents, like, send your kids. You want your kids to be prepped. Yeah. 
like for the world if they if they can go to ek and, and be a 4.0 student still and deal with all that oh yeah the oh they're ready for the world mm -hmm. that's what the world actually looks like yeah but they want to just stay in west michigan and work at this, the dad's company then they can, they can go to egr they can go to ada and they ek is a beautiful shows. school in my they opinion it's Rockford. prettier than egr i think it's a really nice school. oh it's gorgeous i've never mm -hmm. been in it oh you guys egr schools are old my kids go to my aunt's like former high school it's old yeah it's gorgeous but it's not like it's fresh and new and modern mm -hmm. the it's, forest hill schools are really nice isn't yeah. the isn't the aren't the christian schools really nice too mm -hmm. uh, yeah this is older anyway. um okay so like i was telling vince i guess i just got to the point where uh, a lot of teachers fall in this boat you're in it for 12 15 years or however long and i'm sure people feel this way in their careers in general but i think teaching is a little less transient yeah. um you don't hear teachers jumping around as hear about teachers jumping around as much and um but thankfully, a lot of my colleagues that I, I initially started teaching with were able to find other career paths and whatnot, um, and they're doing really well. I have a good friend that taught special ed at EK who's now the director at the Chamber of Commerce, whatever. So I kind of saw some of my friends going in that direction. I was like, do I want to spend 30 years teaching? Um, my, teacher, my students always said, don't get a teacher butt. Yeah, <laughs> which is basically like apparently a flat pancake butt because you yeah, just sit on your ass all the time. <laughs> I, even teach. I was like, do I want a teacher butt? No. <laughs> so I this was not like, I grew up. This is not what I want to be when I grow up. I was like, I gotta do those squats. Yeah. I gotta get into fitness. No. Um. So I was just like brainstorming every day, driving to work. Um. What could I do? What could I do? Every single day for months. Um. And I was like, oh, I think it'd be cool to start this thing and showcase health, wellness, fitness places around Grand Rapids because no one's doing that. And um, I've always been passionate about fitness and whatnot. So I just kind of created this website. Initially, it's called GR Healthy Living. And I just pooled all these different businesses together and um, was like showcasing them on social media, which also no one else was doing. And, and then just started growing. And then I came up with the membership idea. And here we are. So I have several social media clients that I consult and do photography for and manage their social. And then also we have about 500 members and COVID has really been a little challenging with that, but cause it's event, it, we do a lot of events and we haven't been able to do that, but, um, just kind of took off and here we are. Yeah. Um, our events is how you make your money with that business primarily or uh, we don't really make money on events because, well, depending, we do a couple, like three or four a year that are more experiential. So, for example, we do like a blacklight booty class. It's like basically you're like twerking while you're doing yoga and um, everyone goes crazy with the glitter and the glow paint and whatnot. And so we'll charge for that and we'll, you know, we'll make a couple thousand or whatever on that type of event. But a lot of times they're free for members. So we're not necessarily profiting off the event itself or just profiting from. It's a perk of membership. The membership. the membership. So the membership is probably the biggest. Yeah. yeah. So it's just 10 bucks a month. Easy. Yeah, that's awesome. And what does membership include for people listening that might want to learn more? Um, first of all, Sweatnet is in other cities as well. So um, we were the second city to launch. Um, Charlotte was the first. And it's in actually a lot of bigger cities. But I thought, you know, Grand Rapids is popping. We're getting mm -hmm. there. Like, I agree. up and coming. We could do this. So um, what's really nice about GR is also the community is so strong. I feel like even Sweatnet in Detroit might struggle to some extent because it's the metropolitan area is so mm -hmm. expansive. But here like the hub is downtown so mm -hmm. just makes it a lot easier to pull people together so event wise it's that's so true perfectly set up and in bigger cities it's like especially you to go work out like you can literally go 40 minutes across like right it's so nice that everything here it's easier to get together because yeah. all my friends in boston you know i remember moving away like i'm gonna miss seeing everybody but they never see each other because everyone's like a good right. 30 40 you know plus minutes away so that's right. a great point with yeah with uh meeting up with your girls to work out. Yeah, it's very social. So a membership just basically includes 
multiple events every month that you have free access to. Um, so currently we're hosting about six. Um, over the summer, you hosted 15 to 20 events a month. It was crazy. I'm sure it'll get back up there once you can be outside yeah, again, right? Yeah. And then um, pre-COVID, we were hosting a ton as well. We did a lot at the museum. We did stuff all over Grand Rapids. We did four events on the Blue Bridge over the summer. Every one of them sold out. It was hundreds of people. I mean, it's just like crazy. I mean, we haven't had a single event that hasn't sold out. So that's huge. Yeah, so, that's not so. On the bit, I'm just interested with the business side. So, mm -hmm. how many members are you guys currently at? And how do you like? That's crazy. Like we've had over a, we've had over one k subscribe, but um, over the course course of COVID, we've lost probably thirty to forty percent. Okay. Um, but members also get exclusive deals and discounts with all of our partners, which is a little weird right now because so many businesses are struggling. So it's mm -hmm. like, I don't know. Do you even want to use a discount right now? Like right. it's yeah. not quite the you same. Feel kind of guilty. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. not quite the same. I even feel guilty using the discounts, but I mean, they're small, so it's not crazy. Um, and then we have an on-demand library. So that's one thing we pivoted or one thing we did. We have like over three, 400 workouts just that you can stream on the SweatNet website. Um, oh, wow. so, but yeah, the events are the bread and butter though. That's why people sign up. They love it. They want to come socialize. They want to get out. They want to try mm -hmm. something new. It's helps kind of break down those intimidation barriers when it comes to fitness or whatever it might be. And they're usually fun. So, yeah. And it's, I love that you showcase different types of workouts, mm -hmm. you know, even like, were you guys like a, a sound thing on the beach? Yeah. Yeah. Like that's yeah. just so cool. So yeah. we're launching this summer Sweatnet Lakeshore. Ooh. We're going to do a lot of, we're going to do more recreational events. We're going to do a lot out at the lakeshore, hikes and beach yoga and that's regularly. So yeah. So there's no one doing that. Um, so, and people love it. We had a couple last summer and we had seven, over 75 people come out. I wow. saw that. Yeah. And I feel like especially with working out, not everyone wants to be on a treadmill every day. And especially nowadays, I'd yeah. rather be outside. And it's fun to have a way to be social with people that isn't just like going to the bars. Right. So I think that that's such a great yes. uh, need that you've pretty much filled in the community. Yeah. And um, it's great for businesses as well. Like so many of our events will try, you know, a new type of workout or whatever. And people will sign up for that yeah, gym or exactly. that studio. And we have that happen all the time or they'll hear about a place they never heard about or they'll connect with somebody in the industry and so there's a lot of networking going on and, you know, so it's cool to kind of plug people in. What do you see? I guess my question is with the pandemic, what, I'm mean, obviously that's changed everything in your business. So where do you see it going in the next 12 months uh, and maybe how it will be different now that obviously whether or not, you know, even once we're past all this, like what have you learned from the pandemic that has helped your business that you won't necessarily go back to? Cause I know we've both, had things change in our right. businesses that you're not necessarily going to go back just because the pandemic is slowing down. Right. That's not even the right way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be honest. There are many times I wanted to give up over the pandemic because running an events based business during a pandemic is probably the worst yeah. industry to be in. Um, literally. So I think be right before COVID we had upward 40 events planned that we had to cancel all of them. So, um, you know, I think just kind of, um, well, for me, I don't, it's hard to say because really the way the business is set up is so much based on these in-person experiences. And I don't mm -hmm. think that's really going to change. I don't think like once we get through COVID, we're going to stop doing that. Right. So I think right now we're just kind of taking the pause that is needed and focusing our efforts a little bit differently. Um, I just picked up a few new social media clients so that in the interim I can, yeah, Stay busy and hopefully, you know, three to six months from now, kind of get back to where we were. So SweatNet is like a uh, franchise or? Yeah, I, I'm licensing the, basically the platform. The platform. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. That's cool. I think, I think it's a cool business model. It's yeah. working. I think it will continue to work. I think that's, uh, like, it's just so different, like, um, like how it all works in that niche. I'll never think about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'm too much of a dude, and that's like yeah. I've been thinking about like, I'm like, oh shit. What percentage of your members are female? Mm, I would say about eighty five percent. We get super psyched though when guys show up. We yeah, want... I've seen guys go to these events. Yeah, and the guys, yeah. I'm telling you, the girls are 
they're pretty cute. Honestly, so. <laughs> I mean, this would be you're single, gentlemen. <laughs> right. Go to an event. Right yeah, like Ten thousand a month, I do it. Room of fit. I got, I got Netflix. <laughs> you got a room of right? fit. Women. My gender just goes go to all sweat events. <laughs> Those yoga pants keep getting, you know, they're the girls are. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you guys seen the Amazon ones? They've been like the blown up. The stay through ones. <laughs> no, the ones have been blown up on Amazon. No, butt cheek ones. Yeah, the budget ones. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> no, seriously. It, and it's no. crazy because I'm thinking whoever produced that is making so much money right now. Are people really buying them? People are... They make really... your butt look pretty good. I'm wearing them right I now. Need... <laughs> I was wondering why you look so good today, Kurt. I didn't want to get a t-shirt butt. Yeah. Nah, <laughs> no, but it's uh, it's crazy. Power social media. <laughs> no, nah, seriously. I'm just like, yo, whoever makes those sweatpants. <laughs> what can we come up with right now? <laughs> well, it reminds me of the fidget spinner. Oh, yeah. Like... Cause you know, you guys hear the story of that. I'm could be like saying it wrong. Someone had a patent. They let the patent go. Someone bought it. Threw some marketing dollars against it, right? Like bought the patent and oh wow, bro, and that blew up. Well, they probably made like two hundred million dollars or something off that. Probably annoying teachers a lot too. Those or is it good <laughs> to keep a kid? Like pop sockets. Oh my god. Yeah, those are good. Nuts. Yeah, why didn't we think? What can we come up with? <laughs> so. I would love some passive income. Not gonna lie. Honestly. <laughs> Do you have any passive income in your business? Um, I'm always busy. So, I mean, I'm always, I feel like I, I, like nothing. So if I don't have events coming out or whatever it might be, then we lose members. So it's not, it's not passive in yeah. that sense. Um, have and you done I'm, any virtual events? We have. How, mm-hmm. how did those work out? Kind of good, great? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's still people that are asking for virtual yeah. events and whatnot. I am, I cannot wait for them to end. I <laughs> can I'm beyond over it, but I mean I get why some people still I just do you, think, do you think your people will be into doing a cooking class? A what? A cooking class? Yeah. Cuz we're doing cooking classes, so. Okay. So yeah, this should take March 24th. We should listening. do Yeah, we should do a cooking class with we'll Swinnet. That'd be sweet. We are actually have been talking about that lately, um doing some things either on social um, or offering some type of virtual class yeah. along those lines. That would be smart. Yeah. And, you know, obviously cooking at home is such a great way to stay healthy, mm-hmm. regardless of what you're cooking. Actually, yeah, throw it against your people. Okay. See what they would like to, to learn how to make. Is it healthy food or whatever? I'm just trying to meet ladies, by the way. <laughs> Are you single? <laughs> I am single. Okay. Ready to mingle. Got to come to sweat at events. I'm telling you. All the hotties are there. It's, yeah. it's the Hit place. Hit me my DMs. I feel like all these girls think I'm like old and finished and married, but I'm not. <laughs> okay. Good to know. So a young bull out here. <laughs> young bull. <laughs> Stack me and cocky. Oh, dude. All the way through. No, I think that'd be a really fun idea. That'd be cool. And I think that that would go align with any workout because you have to like yeah. nourish your body and all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's definitely happening. All right. That'll be fun. <laughs> um, Man, I feel like, yeah, it's such a good conversation at the beginning about school. I know. School. I'm excited like... to see all this. <laughs> yeah. So I, teach, could, it... I could talk for hours and hours about just... You're a teacher. All those things. Yeah, I'm not hating against you. Yeah, and I just have strong opinions. No, I, 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 teachers definitely I think <laughs> where you're coming from is, you know, obviously understandable. And I think it's unfortunate because mm-hmm. I know so many teachers that do care and that would never. That's what yeah. I think bums me out. It gives such a bad, it's like for all teachers, it's right. like. But there are, unfor- there are teachers that yeah, you're right. suck. No, you're right. This, I can't even imagine the things. Yeah. And like, Again, I'm. It didn't bug me. I'm sorry that. But I'm just like. But again, I'm like more compact. Like you, the more you tell me I can't do something, the more I'm going to do it. So mm-hmm. in a but, way, but, thank but like, them. <laughs> no, I'll never fuck them. But like, <laughs> and I was right, and you were wrong. But like, um, but it's crazy. Like other people, like it's nuts. Like I, I don't know. Some people like hold people's opinions such a high value. Yeah, that but anyone somebody says, they take that over their own version. Or is of themselves. it because that happened to you, and that's why you don't? No, I, I was never been. I really? never been like that. You're that's, lucky. That's the thing. But you should. I just. I mean. It, yeah. Yeah, you just should never discourage someone as an educator, ever. Is that how you talk to your kids? Just kidding. <laughs> I can't even fathom I can't ever. Fathom but it you know, there may be sometimes that you may say something as something that you meant to be constructive, or yeah, maybe you're having a conversation about behavior or whatever it might be and it could be misconstrued i don't know like i i would hope i would never and you're alone around a bunch of kids you're probably like well those this will never no adult will find out i yeah. can get it like that's yeah. just so messed up let's take, well, let's take a short time home i gotta move this light sorry 
Sarcasm can be hard too. You know, like yeah. especially I remember mm -hmm. if you're joking around with a kid or you're being sarcastic, they can take it the wrong way or that can really mess mess with their head or like All you just right. have to be so careful. Yeah. And we had some real I mean I I would be sarcastic sometimes which it's I'm not a sarcastic person, but sometimes like you know, you want to be funny oh, yeah. or you want to like mess around and then next thing you know a kid hates you because you may have said something that was offensive that you didn't even oh, realize, you know. God. But, you juggle all the little different individual emotions and personalities. Yeah. And well, that's why that's why you can't, you know. Yeah, to give people some mercy and some some grace. Like I never, I never looked at my teachers and like, like you know, <laughs> yeah. I didn't meet them with that energy. I just like, oh, because you're having a bad day or whatever, right? You're taking it on me. Cool, I'm tough, but like, mm -hmm. <laughs> she's not. He's not. Like, and so if that was anybody else, like, you just completely, like, mm -hmm. said one thing to them that's going to stay yeah. there their whole life. Right. And you just were being funny or snarky or razzing them. Yeah. And it's like, I'm like, Ugh. Yeah. Read the room. Like, be more, understand, like, you have to understand that as a teacher, I feel like, that's your, your biggest job is, like, understanding who yeah. people are. Right? And you're supposed to, like, that find those That intuition is so important. Oh, yeah. You know, if you're, like, a parent and your kids are struggling in school, like, stop asking them questions they can't answer. Mm -hmm. I said, ask your kid why. Kid doesn't know why he's not, he's not doing good in school. If he knew, he'd be doing what great. What should in the parent ask? I think the parents should spend way more time figuring out what your kid's talents are and what they're not, and like have them understand, like, yo, this is the system. You have to go to school. If you don't, we, we get in trouble, right? But at the same time, it's like, like you may not be like Jacob may never be as good as Ashley at school, and that's totally stop fine. that talk. You know what I'm saying? And that, you're smart AF. No, I'm just saying. Lay off. I'm, I'm just saying for an example, right? Like, so it's like, you don't want Jacob living life thinking that he's not smart. Yeah. And what happens is that that's what happens. Like, so what do you do? What you don't you... let that happen. How? You get your, you have to know your kid. Like, Well, you... the way, I think it's just the way you react to things, the way you, like, I even remember, I wasn't great at math. And I remember I stood up, our, our math teacher asked us to stand up if we got 90% or higher. I don't remember why this stands out to me. And I stood up and they're like, oh, and they were like surprised. Ugh. I still remember that, See? you know, like, oh, they were surprised that I stood up. So they must think, yeah, and you know, who knows what they think of me. So and there you go. But I, and I, I mean, that was, I would think I was in sixth grade. And that's yeah. one of the very few memories I have of sixth of grade. But and, and parents always like complain, like, especially during this whole, like, they don't know what the kids are learning. They can't help their kids. So the parents don't understand the material. Mm -hmm. Teachers barely, I mean, they should know it. And the kid doesn't get it. Like, how does that kid thrive? Mm -hmm. All you see on, on social media is like, I don't understand this goddamn math. My kid has yeah. figured it like himself. You know, like the teacher has like a hundred kids. Like, who? Wait, you're gonna pay a private tutor now? Like, yeah. how do you get? Like, how do you even get there? I think I think the conversation is like, all right, kid. you don't move on until they get it. You just gotta keep hammering it until it's like finally like they got that light bulb moment, and then you can be like, all right. Let's move on. But mm -hmm. I feel like for kids like me, if you can describe the overall point of it, then I'm ready more into it. Mm -hmm. But if you're not going to get to the point, then like I'm completely uninterested. Because I'm in my own head a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of teachers are like, oh, you need to learn this because this is how life works. Well, that's not a good enough reason for me. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to disagree with you. And kids like me, like, show me the pro like, show me critical thinking in math, and then I'll probably be into it. Mm hmm. But you don't show me that. You just need to do this because this is the rules. You want to understand the why. Like, you want to understand. How do you use it? What's the point? Let's justify why this is relevant. Exactly. Get me in, like, like from the big picture. Right. Not just, oh, it's Monday, so it's this lesson. Right. Like, who, who, like I don't get excited by that. Mm -hmm. I just feel like I'm just doing all this work for no reason. Right. It seems busy. It seems pointless. It seems like I'm just jumping through another hoop. This is, like, prescribed, and there's yep. no point behind it. Exactly. So it's like. I understand. She's like, well, you need to figure it out. Well, you need to figure it out. That's how I feel like. <laughs> it's exhausting. Even. It is, you know, when you have all these standards as an educator, you're trying to hit, they have to know X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, but even if you don't even buy into it as an educator, you still have to right. do 10 weeks of SAT whatever. prep or whatever it might be. And I could hate every second, but I have to do it. Right. And it's, it sucks. That's what takes the energy in the life. And you know, I think it just... It's like anti-maskers blaming the waitress for the mask rule. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever's customer... Like, yo, who is bigger than that? Yeah. 
But, you know, overall, if you're great at school and your kids are great at school, you know, don't listen to me. Keep keep doing your thing. But I did kids, have some beautiful moments in the classroom where we could have conversations like this, especially in my smaller classes. I had some great classes that were like 15 kids and we would just talk. I think that's the sweet spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 15 kids, a conversation about this topic. And here are some deliverables that I need to see. Like, think about kids. You know, think about kids in the modern era. They got TikTok. They got Twitter. They got Snapchat. They got, these girls don't like them today. This guy wants to date. Like, all the things are happening. And you're also asking them to, like, just focus on school right. when, like, they want to be an influencer on TikTok. You didn't even bring up like, <laughs> I had kids that failed because of their cell phones. They could not put them down. Oh, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. That's another issue. <laughs> That's a whole nother. I can't even imagine. And then also, we didn't get into the vaping. I never saw that that much. Oh, it's vaping. big now, I think. My, really? Uh, I don't know. So anyway, <laughs> I have friends with older kids, and it's like everyone's just like oh. vaping behind their backpack, which is just so funny to me. It's funny because look at the new cigarette, and they don't think it is. I know. And then now they're all oh, like, I'll never smoke cigs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, mm, isn't that a cigarette? Is that an electronic cigarette? No, I'm what kind of vape is in it now. All right. So, <laughs> do you remember Smoker Circle? Was that the teachers know about? Oh that? yeah. What's that? Crazy. Yeah. Iconic. They eventually shut down that whole area. Did they? Because the neighbors were complaining. We had mm. Smoker's Corner in our high school. <laughs> yeah. It was like all property. We just went to Seven Eleven. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. Like kids would wear bongs before walking into class. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. Many times. Think about it, like seven thirty a.m. <laughs> you know, first hour or whatever, and it's six of you guys just like fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like I can't believe this is like a thing. That was a thing. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> now those kids, of course, they're probably losers. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not mad at a teacher. Like, you know, they're not. They're getting. You know, but the rest of the kids aren't. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair to say. I'm also not like. Just because, no. You know, there's some kids who are like, definitely, like, they don't want to be shit, they will never be shit. Yeah. You know? This is the, that's just their decision, though. I think there comes a point where you recognize that consequence. Yeah. In action and just apathy in general. Like, what do you expect to get out of anything if you're not going to care at all? Um, yeah. And uh, there, uh, it's hard to reach someone that's in that state of mind, and you want to, but it's it's really hard. I've tried many, many times. It's like yeah. the, you can build the gym, put the weights in it, but they got to lift the weights. They got to believe it more than anybody. And that's why I feel like I did. So, you know, I did a lot of time hating on my teacher. There there was two teachers in my life. Three. Give them a shout out. That that probably changed my life. So uh, preschool. Okay. Uh, Miss Mary, she changed my life. She was just a dope preschool teacher. Impacted me. How so? She just did. She was just a good teacher. And then... uh. Uh, my second grade teacher. Okay. Um, she was dope in the sense of like, she like, I feel like she understood who I was at such a young age. Cause I felt like, I'll, I'll, cause she's like, Vince, you'll be fine. Cause like, cause she was seeing me like, I wouldn't do great in like spelling tests or grammar or whatever. And she like, you're not like, she's like, you're not, you're, I definitely like to see A's from you. But like, she was like, you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. I love you that. Mm-hmm. And then What's my, her name? uh, and I forget her last name. Uh, again, I'll call my <laughs> teacher. But, uh, and uh, my sixth grade teacher, Mr. Young Creek, history teacher. Right. What did he do? He was, again, just a good teacher. They, they understood. They took the time out to uh, connect with me. I love that. Because they knew that I wasn't like like anybody the else for, yeah. in mm-hmm. the class. And that's, so. some, that's sometimes all a kid needs is they just need to be, feel like... You care. Yeah, that you and if they understood. Mm-hmm. And it is hard. You're right. To your point, like, if you have 100 plus kids you're seeing every day, it's like, and then, you know, I, there's certain kids I would always connect with and others I would be like, there's no way. <laughs> you yeah. know, like, it's hard to get to that point with everyone. But, I mean, I hope that any, especially high school students can find at least one teacher that really makes an impact because that is huge. Mm-hmm. You didn't mention any from high school. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of great teachers at UK High School, I feel like. Like, you know. Mm-hmm. But again, I was like, I kept to myself a lot. I don't know. I'll just do my own thing at that point. At that point, I was grown in my head. You're self-taught. 
self sufficient at that point. I just, I just needed those four years to get out of there. Yeah. All right. Any closing thoughts? Um, so it's a great conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks Thank for you. making time. I liked it. Hopefully I want to go. We're going to do a cooking class. Yes. No, seriously. Like, that's. We're going to do that for sure. We're doing a cooking class. And I hope we can get to one of the fitness events soon. Yeah. Love to have you guys. Yep. I think your story is inspiring. I think we talk a lot about education. I think it's going to be a hot topic on social yeah. media. Hopefully, none of us get canceled. Um, <laughs> we'll keep on pushing. Love you, teachers. All right, guys. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Yes, I'm going to learn this jazz, 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 jazz. Ooh, I even got your girl some jazz yesterday. Choo, 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 choo. Now I'm just playing.